everybody, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I am gonna be tackling drama school. So I've had loads of questions and DMs and messages from you guys asking about advice for auditions for drama school, how to get into drama school, lots of things like that. As I know, lots of drama school auditions are happening at the moment. So I thought I would make maybe a few different videos on the subject of drama school, tips for auditions, checklists, things like that, advice, and hopefully you will find them helpful while you are auditioning for drama school. If any of you are auditioning for drama school at the moment or have been for auditions for drama school, please let me know because I love to hear what you guys are up to. Before we get into the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel uh, if you haven't already. I make two videos every single week on all things to do with theatre, drama school, shows, things like that. And if you have no idea who I am, which you probably don't. If this is your first time here, my name is Georgie. I am an actor. I have been performing in the West End and in lots of different shows around town. And I started this channel to share my tips and tricks, like behind the scenes kind of insights with you guys. So yeah, if that sounds like something you're interested in, just click the subscribe button. And also follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you haven't already. I will leave my handles just on the screen. Right, gonna get on with the video. Yeah, as I said, I've had loads of requests for a video like this, so I thought that I would do it and I hope you find it helpful. So these are my top 10 tips for auditioning for drama school. I myself went to drama school. Um, I have lots of friends that went to drama school. So I've kind of picked up little bits of advice along the way from myself as well as lots of different people who are now in the industry. So I've just compiled a little list of my top tips for when you are thinking of auditioning for drama schools, like your kind of first steps to take. On with the video. Okay, so my first tip is to do your research. If there's a specific school you have in mind, if you have no idea where you want to go, do your research first. Ask people that may know a bit more about the schools than you. Go online, have a look. Other types of shows you want to be in and see what schools those people trained at. There's so many different steps you need to take before deciding where you want to audition because ultimately you want to be auditioning for the types of schools that are gonna give you what you want, as well as like you, you know, obviously wanting to do well at your audition and get in. It's all about what schools are right for you as well. So make sure you do your research first. Don't just go on assumption. Make sure you look into the schools that you're thinking about going to, look at what they can offer you in terms of classes and degrees and diplomas and I don't know, things like that. Make sure that you are just aware going into it what you are auditioning for. And if you have no idea where you wanna go, have a look around, look on the internet, ask people, think about what you want from a school and go from there, I'd say, as opposed to just auditioning at the schools that you think are the best or you've heard of the best, because that's not really gonna help you if, say, you really want to be a musical theater and you end up auditioning for an acting course at an acting school. It's really important to know before you apply and audition and go through all of those steps that you're actually auditioning somewhere that is gonna give you the outcome that you want in the end, if that makes sense. And, and also somewhere that is the type of place that you would wanna go, is in the type of location that you would like. There's lots of different things that you need to think about before you even think about auditioning. My second piece of advice is to audition at as many places as you can. I'm not saying go and audition for 10 schools, I know how expensive it can be, um, but I do think it's good to have your options open and also sometimes you can be really pleasantly surprised by different schools. I know sometimes you've got your mind and your heart set on a really specific school, that's where you want to go and that is great, but sometimes you can find somewhere that you didn't think that you'd like as much and that could be the perfect fit for you. So I just think it's really important initially, if you have the option and the opportunity to audition at multiple schools, I would say go for it because I think there's no point in writing things off. You might find something even better than the place that you initially thought would be perfect for you. Equally, you might realize that that is the perfect school for you and that's the one you really want to go to. Also, it gives you more chances to practice your auditions. It gives you more options. It gives you more opportunities. I just think it's, very worthwhile. I actually wish I'd auditioned at a few more schools than I did and I auditioned at three schools but the same thing happened to me. I had my heart set on one drama school that I really wanted to go to. I ended up not getting into that school and my, then my second choice which I did get into just didn't feel right. My actual, my third choice on the day at the audition felt like the right fit for me actually out of all, all three so I ended up going to that one and it was a really good decision. So just don't write anything off initially. I think it's always best to have your options open. My third tip is to make sure you have all your paperwork in place. Now, I'm not gonna go into details on all that in this video. Maybe I'll make another video on it, but make sure that you have everything you need in place 
for you to go to your audition. So after you've applied to audition, been accepted to audition, they've asked for all of the information. Also in terms of things like sheet music, if you're auditioning for a musical theatre course, make sure you have your sheet music and you have copies of it all ready I'd say like take one big folder of everything all the documents you will need any documents they've asked you to bring back with you maybe if you're going back for a recall or something like that I think as well it's good to maybe have a copy of your monologue with you just in case you're sat there and right before you think oh what's that line you can look in your folder and just have a little double check just any documents they've asked for just make sure you have it all prepared before you get there because you don't want to be suddenly on your way on the train to your audition and you look down through the checklist and realize you've forgotten to take a really important document and that could mean you don't get to audition that day. So just really important to think ahead, check through all the documents that you've been asked for and make sure you're very well prepared. My fourth tip is to think about budget. So with drama school auditions comes a lot of extra things to think about financially. There's the cost of auditioning itself, which you have to budget for. There's the cost of traveling to and from the audition, which has to be taken into consideration also maybe if the audition is over a couple of days which I know my audition for Guildford uh, was there was the first round and then the recall was over a weekend so we all ended up having to book a hotel which was in another additional cost things like that are really important to think about and prepare for before you start auditioning especially if you are auditioning for multiple schools that's actually quite a lot of money to whip up you know make sure that you've thought about it and budgeted for it and you know that you have enough money to get you from A to B and the little things thinking about money for an oyster card, money for the train, money for the tube, things like that. Just make sure you take all those things into consideration. It's all about being prepared really and really knowing what you're getting yourself in for. And actually a lot of this stuff I really didn't know. So hence why I'm making this video. And hopefully this will help some of you if these are some of the things that maybe you didn't realize or hadn't thought about. I'm sure that most of you have, but I just thought it would be helpful to kind of cover everything just in case. My fifth tip is to choose material that suits you. It's really easy to get kind of caught up in, oh, I really want to do that monologue or that song's such a showstopper song that's going to really grab attention in my audition and really make me stand out. All of those things, yeah, are really important and should be taken into consideration, but also you want to pick material that really shows you off to the best of your abilities. Yeah, maybe singing a really high belty song with like a backflip at the end would be amazing for some people but maybe something slightly different in a different vocal tone would suit you better and also make you stand out. You want to do something that's going to show you off. You don't want to go in there and sing a really belty song and then not be able to deliver it as well as you could maybe something or more soprano song or equally with a monologue. You don't want to go in and do a monologue that's meant for a 50 year old man when you're an 18 year old woman you know just things like that it's best to show yourself off as you are in that moment to the best of your ability and just because maybe something's not got as much of a wow factor i think don't be discouraged by that i think it's just so important to be comfortable and do something that suits you because ultimately they are auditioning you they're not auditioning a character or the person from that play that that monologue's from they're auditioning you and they want to see you doing things that really show you off to the best of your ability and you just want to feel comfortable at the end of the day because it's already a nerve-wracking experience so yeah make sure you do something that really really suits you tip number six is in regards to actually i was going to say it's just in regards to monologues for drama school editions but equally it can be for songs and the tip was to read the whole play that your monologue is from but equally i think with a song, you should know everything about the musical that it's from. Obviously, sometimes you can't read like the entire script of a musical, but you should do your research into it and find out exactly what's happening for that character at that moment with the song. Really think about why they're singing that song at that certain time. But as well, with a monologue, you want to read the whole play and know exactly why that character is speaking that monologue at that exact moment. Because A, for you, for your performance, you want to have as much information as possible to give that performance and... I just think it's really helpful in giving a performance to know why that character is speaking that monologue or why that character is singing that song at that certain point. I feel like it really enhances your performance in any circumstance, but equally, you don't want to be caught out because chances are the panel will probably ask you some questions about the show slash play, ask you for your opinions on things, and you do not want to be caught out and being stood there like, 
mm, I haven't read it. You want to make sure that you know everything there is to know about the play or musical that your piece is from, just in case you get asked questions about it. That's something that they'll really look out for is knowing that you have really put thought into the pieces you've picked and really thought about why that character is doing what they're doing. So I think that's probably my most important tip. Really make sure that you know where your material is coming from. Tip number seven. Tip number seven is to speak in your own accent. Obviously there are exceptions to this. I think sometimes I know in one of my drama school auditions, we did an exercise where we had to speak in different accents didn't go very well but I think as you are as you are auditioning yourself to go to this school I think it's really important to go as yourself and speak in your natural speaking voice I think it's important to ultimately go in as yourself it's, it all comes back to kind of being yourself and don't feel like you have to put on a certain accent because ultimately they are going to want to see you as you are as your authentic self and they're not going to want to see you know someone putting on an RP accent when they're from Manchester. They're gonna to wanna to see the real you. And I think it's great to have people with lots of different dialects and accents at drama school. And I think that's something to champion and something to really be proud of. So definitely go as yourself and speak as you would just in normal life. Tip number eight, why can't I do this? <laughs> Is to check what you need to bring. Normally on the website of the drama school that you're auditioning for, there will be all of the relevant information or they will send you a pack with all of the details of everything you need to bring. Make sure you check it and you know exactly what you need to be bringing in your bag on the day of your audition. Don't suddenly look at it the day before this list and realize that you need tap shoes and you don't have tap shoes and then all of the shops are shut and you can't take tap shoes then to your audition. Don't leave things to the last minute. Make sure you've checked the list. Make sure you know everything that you need for that specific audition and make sure it's all packed in a bag the night before. I think I might do a little maybe drama school audition checklist of all the things that you may need in your bag to take with you to your audition. If you'd be interested in seeing that video, just let me know. Um, but yeah, make sure you have checked everything you need to take. You don't want to be caught out on the day when they're like, right, everyone, pop your ballet shoes on and you're like. Number nine is something I harp on about a lot, but I think it's really, really important. And I've kind of touched on it already with the whole speaking in your own accent point, but it is to be yourself. This whole thing is just about being yourself ultimately. There is no point pretending to be someone else. These people are looking for authentic people to have in their drama school to teach to get to know they really want you to just be yourself don't feel like you have to go in and be a copy of someone that went to that school a few years before you or someone in the industry that you admire really really just relax and be yourself because that's ultimately that what they want to see they want to see you it's not about going in for a certain character you're going into audition to train at a college as yourself you're not going in to play the Wicked Witch of the West. You're going in to be yourself and train and learn with these people. So they will not want to see you putting on a show of what you think you should be like, because you can always tell when people are doing that. And it's not something that they're looking for at drama school. Honestly, they're really not. They just want you to be you and feel proud of that and feel proud of, of yourself and just relax and don't feel the need to put anything on. Just be yourself, honestly so important. And my final tip is it's not so much about the audition, it's about the aftermath of the audition. I'd say don't put too much pressure on yourself. I wrote be accepting of rejection and I don't know if that sounds a bit weird but basically I think it's about knowing that you may not get in and that's okay and that is just because everything happens when it's meant to happen and that might be like the the most amazing thing for you maybe not getting into that specific school that year you just don't know where life's going to go and you don't know what lessons you're going to learn and what things are going to lead to other things and I think also it's about resilience this industry and there is so much rejection in this industry and it's quite a good kind of starting point to that because you may not get into drama school and that's okay. You may not get in first time, you may not get in second time, but that doesn't mean that you're not gonna go to drama school. And equally, that doesn't mean that you're not gonna have a career in this industry because not everyone goes to drama school and that's okay. It's just about what's right for you. And I think it's about how you handle the rejection and not even handle the rejection, but handle the potential rejection because when you're auditioning for drama school, you don't know which way it's gonna go. You may get in, you may not. And either is fine, it's just about what's right and what's happening for you in that moment and I think it's about ultimately as well things like this in life are about how you react and how you handle them and I think that how you handle whether you do or don't get into drama school will really set you up well for the rest of your career and life and it's really just because one door closes doesn't mean that's the end 
it's just a door you can open it again you know don't fear failure is what I'm saying and I think that's one of the big things and why we all get so nervous for auditions for drama school and auditions for shows and other things in life but like in particular in theatre I remember being so nervous and I just wish I'd taken that pressure off because what's the worst that can happen you don't get in that's fine you try again next year and it just proves to you as well how much you want it and you know I think if you take that pressure off yourself when you're auditioning because ultimately that ner that horrible like fear feeling is what if I don't get in and what if you don't get in you know it's okay it does matter obviously I don't mean it doesn't matter it's it's you know it's a hard thing but it's not the end of the world and there's always there's always another chance and another opportunity so I think that's a bit of a weird point but I hope that it also helps Oh, hello. I'm sorry. To <laughs> hello, Jack. Did I get anything from the kebab shop? <laughs> <laughs> Got about right. Actually, I quite would. What are you getting? Chicken nuggets and chips. Sorry, I didn't try. No, no. I'm glad you did. Sorry, Jack. <laughs> um, thanks, Jo. That's right. Sorry about that. Courtney just came in to uh, ask me if I wanted to say anything from the kebab shop, and I was not up for missing that opportunity. Right, that is all of my points. That is my top 10 tips when you're auditioning for drama school. Um, I hope that you found this video useful. I really hope you did. If you did find it useful, give it a thumbs up so that I know or leave me a comment down below letting me know if you're auditioning for drama school soon or any tips you guys have to share with everybody else because I just absolutely love reading through your comments and I love seeing you guys chat in the comments as well. I'm gonna be making lots more videos on this subject. Leave any suggestions you have down below. Um, and I will definitely add them to my list. Uh, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram as well and Twitter, even though I'm not very good at Twitter. But hey, follow me over there as well if you fancy. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button down below. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a lovely rest of the day and I will see you again in the next one. Bye.